Yo, what it do, everybody? It's your boy, No Name. Let's get right into it. So, it's time for me to bring back a classic. I've been memeing about this internally with some friends for for about a year now, and I think it's finally time I do it because I got inspired by some stuff that I got in a private league that I think uh, makes this the perfect time to finally bring it back. And that build is going to be Trihode BV, right? An old classic. This is the finished PLV that you have on the screen here. The tail of this video is going to be just like the process just like i did with the hex west video because y'all really seem to like that idea thank you guys for letting me know that y'all like that by the way i will continue to do these as much as i can remember to for builds that i want to play going forward uh because clearly people like you guys need like people like seeing that insight and honestly i don't blame you i like seeing that insight as well um i just want to quickly go over the pro like the results of the process a little bit and then let you know you go through all of the work on the back end before i get started though if you like this type of video, again, liking the video really lets me know that y'all do like it. Like I said, I'm making another one of these based on the fact that the one for the Hex Blaster did so well and got so much positive feedback about what it did. So if you guys like this type of video, like, let me know, right? I will continue to do it. And maybe, like, uh, as a question for me to you guys, is it cool if I do this for builds that I don't plan on playing? Like, am I allowed to show you just, like builds that I've worked on or like maybe even like failed POBs like how, how do you feel about POBs that I don't actually turn into a character per se like not immediately anyways like, like, like give me some feedback there right or maybe I'll like put that as a community post or something right just to like get an idea of what I'm allowed to do per, per, per your view with this type of content and of course if you like what I'm doing here and want to see more of what I do feel free to drop a subscribe on it it really helps me out uh you know we're just working away at it right I like to put, put out what I do if you like what I do Help a brother out, right? Anyway, get into the character here because I said Tri Herald BV, and I know you were probably shaking when you saw the title. You're like, he's got to be clickbaity. He's got to be going crazy. No, I am running three heralds Herald of Purity, Herald of Ash, Herald of Ice. Technically, not the OG Tri Herald. I know. I know. I know. The OG Tri Herald ran Herald of Thunder as well, but I legitimately could not justify running it. Um, I like ran the math, just was not strong enough, didn't provide any value because Herald of Ice is barely strong enough. But you'll see Herald of Ice is actually providing 18.9% of my damage, and it's not because of the normal buff effect. So let's talk about how I made this work. What's the core, right? BV, pretty sure you know, but if you don't know, is a Fizz skill that scales very well with conversion because it's a Fizz spell. So historically, you just scale it through hatred abuse with cold conversion. And I'm combining that in here with another step, which is abusing Herald of Purity and Herald of Ash as well, because Herald of Purity is the one of the only percentage Fizz damage reservations, and Herald of Ash is another conversion one. Fizz gain is fire and spell fire. So we're going to abuse all of these elements together to create something disgusting. You'll notice Herald of Ash is 25%, Herald of Purity is 29%. Like, we are getting so much damage out of our reservations. This is what makes this type of setup so strong. And if you use it on stronger skills than BV, you actually just have characters that delete bosses, quite frankly. Uh, but BV is a very comfortable mapping skill. And we'll talk a little bit more about that mapping in a second. The core of the concept and the reason that I've realized that Trihulk will work is because of this cluster notable right here, Heraldry. Heraldry applies exposure for each Herald that you have on you. Herald of Ice is Cold, Ash, Fire, Thunder, Lightning. And so... By playing a multi-element setup with both Herald of Ice and Herald of Ash in, I'm able to get my exposure through just simply having the Herald on, which then allows me to activate Mastermind of Discord, the major node of Elementalist. Getting this combo in tandem means that I'm walking around applying minus, 30, minus 35 alt res to Cold and Fire to my targets, which then add in Ellie Week and Assassin's Mark, and it's a massive debuff special for lots of damage. Then other reasons to play elementals, of course, is the AOE and damage from Heart of Convergent, Heart of Destruction. I always call that Heart of Conversion for some reason. And then there's Shaper of Storms, which gives us the Perma Shock, because Shock is just generally strong. You'll see this is contributing 16% of our damage here. And Bastion of Elements is just a good defensive node that you should almost always take on an elementalist. I find it really hard not to take this node, right? Then we up the stakes a little bit further. Because we're Herald scaling, we get to do stuff like take this really efficient Herald, herald wheel here. If you look here, you'll see that these three points that I'm hovering are 4.4% per, including a mastery, uh, which is 4% of its own. So just a lot of value here in the buff effect. But then through this node here, you'll also see that we get a ton of our reserves of mana efficiency, 18% to be exact, because we have three of those reservations on us. Then add in this mana mastery to fit in our reservations. 
And that's how we make the character work. We use a double cluster setup to fit all the things together that we want, which is generally just damage, AOE, stuff of that nature, right? The other thing that's core to this build and the, ma the other major decision to make when putting this together is how you're going to actually clear because BV, as we all know, is a fairly short range skill. Even if you were to add a little bit of AOE to it or a lot of AOE, it's still fairly short range. And the way to fix that clear is through two pieces. One of them is one that I own, Orius End, and that's from, I got it in the private league when I killed my first Uber series, as well as Impulse's Broken Heart, which is the actual main piece that this core used to be built around. This build back in the day, Trihold BV used to exist because of the way that Impulse's interacted with Beacon of Ruin, an old elementalist ascendancy node that gave elemental prolif, which you can combine even today on gloves with the shock prolif if you wanted that instead of the Herald buff effect for maximum damage. Like, Herald buff effect is probably overkill thinking about it, and the Shock Pro Lift will probably go hard, except, remember, I have explosions besides the impulsive explosions in this character. If you were running this character, this idea, without Aureus End, I would recommend using Shock Pro Lift gloves or just getting Storm's Gift, because they're now Global Drop, in order to replace that effect. So that you can get the shock prolifing to then continually enable impulsive to chain, which is what really makes this character feel fucking fantastic, right? Uh, you can also technically chain from if your impulsive manages to freeze something, it will, you know, the freeze explosion from Herald of Ice could then shock something that then when it dies will impulse again. You see what we're getting into? Really just setting up a chain of ridiculous explosions out there, ridiculous explosion to light up the screen in beautiful colors and make the game fun, right? That's what we're going for. That's the core of the idea. Uh, one other piece that I want to talk about in here, just to let you know, that's not mandatory, right? Like, Aureus, not mandatory, just feels good. Save for Ashes of the Stars, not actually mandatory, just a really high damage option. You'll see it's 30%. Um, and I personally like it because it's going to offer me a lot more defensive value than just offensive value. Level quality is very strong. The quality effect is particularly strong because quality on BV is hit rate. Um, and that's why it's so high value. And then additionally, it will reduce the cooldown of my automation setup, as well as my call to arm setup, which is really going to offer me a lot of safety. It's going to give me better power charge up time on single targets through Assassin's Mark. Like generally speaking, I'm a big fan of the Ashes in this setup, but I'm only using it because I dropped it. I can still play this character with a Yoke in its spot, with a Replica Dragon Fangs in its slot, a rare plus two amulet in its slot, even just a rare plus one amulet would be fine. Uh, but ashes so i have it and it was an interesting badge of utility that i wouldn't have been able to have access to otherwise Alrighty, that's a wordy ass rundown of the character and how we put it together i'm gonna leave it to me in the past who built the character to tell you about how this was actually done and like let you see the process again if you like seeing this process let me know really appreciate it. if you have any questions about it please let me know you know ask those questions feel free to Join the Discord to ask those questions as well. That link will be in the description. Or, you know, check me out on Twitch. Uh, I'm live sometimes, not super frequently. But, you know, when I am live, it'll be there. If you follow, you'll get that notification. That'll also be in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching. And, you know, I hope you enjoyed the PLB section of the video. Take care. All right. Let's make this happen, y'all. So, Triherald BV. What does that actually entail up? Well, one, BV, obviously, right? the skill itself that will be doing all of our damage. And two, a little bit more importantly, is the Heralds. Let's talk very quickly about the Heralds and why the Herald scaling is so valuable historically and now, right? Because it plays into one of the old methods of scaling the character, another one of the old methods of scaling the character, and how I'm going to fuse the approaches of the past and the present together to create a full character now. So, Triherald BV is a really, really old archetype of, of BV. It honestly almost predates me. I started the game in Synthesis League, and the build was on its way out the door at that point in time. Like, I played BV three leagues after I started, and by the time I finally played BV, it was just pure cold conversion. There was no Tri-Herald anywhere in the game. Uh, not because it was dead or, like, removed or interaction got destroyed. It was just that it was not strong enough anymore. Because back then, Herald gave only flat damage. Like, only, except for, like, I think Herald of Ash still had its percent damage stuff, but it was mostly flat damage stuff back then. And the game was fine to have that, because BV scaled pretty decently with flat damage and the game's damage requirements weren't that high. So people just ran triple elemental heralds back then on elementalist with like Ellie Prolet from Impulsive and went crazy, right? So what did that tell you? Heralds plus Impulsa is a core. And that's a core that we're going to use in this build. 
we're going to use impulses because it's an explosion source. Explosions are the number one thing that this build needs in order to really like thrive. What's the other thing that this build needs? AoE. And that's what we're going to get to our ascendancy real quick. We're going to play this on an elementalist because the ascendancy comes with baked in gearless AoE. You can definitely get more AoE than Heart of Destruction and at all times even when you're playing with Forbidden Power on. But this is a full charge stacking setup and in the private league I'm in, I don't have excess charge stacking gear. We have charge stacking gear, but people are using said charge stacking gear. So I don't have excess charge stacking gear to do this properly yet. It's a transition point that you could go into, but I don't know if I'm going to do all that. Maybe I will, maybe I won't. I have to think about it some because I'd I like this Tri-Herald core that I've come up with. So, Tri-Herald. What's the other thing that this approach leans off of? We gleaned some insight from uh, Fire BV. Uh, if you harken back to like Grimrose Fire BV from, I want to say it was like Ultimatum League or maybe Ritual. Uh, if you harken back to Fire BV, the number one thing that it scaled off of was the way that Herald of Ash scales with buff effect. Herald of Ash is a buff that grants percent physics fire as well as percent spell fire damage, right? Like this is a ridiculously strong 25% reservation if you can use both lines. It's a lot like hatred in that sense. Remember that hatred, you know, almost everybody's favorite aura, right? Right, guys? Right? Hatred is percent physics cold and percent more cold damage. It's just that the numbers are higher because it's a 50% aura instead of a 25%er. And it's generally more aura effect. But through Herald buff effect, you could get Herald of Ash to go crazy. And you would do that with stuff like Circles of Anguish for 60% buff effect each. You could add in all sorts of other, where's the other? There's another like major source of it. Circle of Anguish is the new thing that's what I'm talking about. There's some on the tree in Discord Artisan and the small passes that lead up to it. On oh, clusters, there we go. And Ringer is okay, but you were really leaning into where it's buff effect one. Empowered Envoy, 20% increased Herald, Herald effect, right? You were really like leaning into buff effect to then combine with this cluster, Lone Messenger, where you didn't have auras. You didn't get to have auras. You had to run like other your, like buff type reservations. But you got to run one really, really juiced up Herald of Ash. And that was how you scaled your character in combination with a bow and the signal fire quiver, quiver which uh, signal fire is a bit of a blast from the past, if you will, because the item has been nerfed significantly since those days. Uh, not nerfed. That's the wrong word for it. But it was, well, I mean, okay, I'm going to call it what it is. It was nerfed. But the item, I believe it's now just Black Gleam. Uh, no, actually, Buckland doesn't even do that anymore, so I have to change it to uh, any source for this to talk about Signal Fire correctly. Signal Fire used to get, you see, Fizz, is com Fizz converted to Fire and Fizz Ass Fire. Um, and they just disabled this version of the item entirely, but it also they also at one point were playing around with the idea of making it only apply to uh, bow skills. Or like it was really messed up, but like you can see this why this would have been so strong. And so cold conversion has been really strong for a similar reason because Asphyxia's Wrath never got taken out of the game. And this just gets 20% cold this is cold. And this is another really high-end option for the character. We're not gonna use this route in this version because again, we're tri Ellie, so I don't want to actually stilt my cold too heavily, but this is really, really strong. Keep that in mind. Now, what are we gonna do then? We're going to scale buff effect on both Herald of Purity and Herald of Ash. And the reason that we're gonna scale it on both of them instead of using Light Lone Messenger is that it then leaves me room to use a defensive reservation, such as Grace, and I can then also put this Hatred on a Blessing at some point, right? These are the things that I want. I want to be able to fit all of this in, and Grace and Hatred do not work if you're running Lone Messenger. Plus, then I don't get the Herald of Purity buff as well. So, how do we make that happen? Let's look at the tree real quick to, you know, get a rough idea of the skeleton for this. I'm just going to very quickly speed run through this pathing path and then kind of sort of explain how we get to here, right? Because this is, I would say this is going to be what I consider standard pathing path for a lot of builds, actually. And so it's important just to kind of be familiar with this pathing. Path it's why I'm so, like, I can click this so quickly. I've just clicked it, I don't know how many times in my lifetime at this point, right? 
I think this is almost all of it. There's a cluster here. There's the AOE node here. There's this node here. I feel like I'm missing one more thing. But if I'm missing it, it's actually because it's specific to this build. So yeah, there we go. This is specific to this build node. So what all did I click? We clicked life nodes as per usual. All right, I'm mean, gonna forget my easiest life node to grab right here. Life nodes, you want this Herald buff effect, right? Herald reservation, because remember we have three Heralds. This is 29%, this is 21% in these three points, like unreserved, saved, that's huge. Um, over here for comparison purposes, this small passive only gives us seven. Pathing all the way over to Charisma will only give us 18%. So since we're reverting three Heralds, this is really efficient. We really like Presage. Now, we need still need a little bit more res reservation efficiency, right? We have minus four, so we're gonna add in uh, Mana Mastery, and now we're good. We've now solved our reservation problem just on tree. You know, we can take a couple of extra masteries while we're here. We're playing BV. We're going to use Unleash as a part of how BV works because the repeats from B from Unleash actually do not penalize us all that much. And most importantly, is that casting BV that many times is a hassle. Like, you know, just fucking, huh, 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 huh. you don't want to do that. We want to click the button once and get stacks and go. So, this path. This is what we're gonna do. You know, crit multi is always good, although I personally am a bigger fan of effective ailments for what we're gonna be doing, because remember we have shock. So if we're critting, we're scaling our shock this way. This is pretty nice for a lot of things. It also scale our chills and freezes, which is uh, pretty nice. There is this mastery here that you can use for aura effect, which is pretty strong. You can also use it for damage per aura. And I believe damage for aura is a little bit stronger, but we'll check this again when we get to the PLB. Like I usually go back and do a tuning pass anyways, right? Make sure you guys are doing tuning passes on your PLBs as you make progression through it. This is always a good tip. Um, on the second crit mastery, we can take crit multi if we want. On the life mastery, you know, 50% life is always good. You can also always get away with uh, percent life, except percent life on this character does not work because we're using impulse. Impulse has a life mod on it, so we can't use that here. We don't really care too much about those. Yes, masteries are good if you're able to stay on full life. The less PDR or full ES, if you can stay on full ES, PDR is incredible. Um, there's also damage taking does not fight fast either shield, but it's not gonna be relevant for us because we're going EB, baby, because this thing's broken. And we need it to sustain the fact that we have reserved all of our mana while also using yes while you while using a blessing. And now you might be thinking, well, what about diadem? Why not diadem? Um, personally, I don't think diadem is strong enough for what I'm currently doing because I'm pathing right next to EB. I think um, while Diadem is insane, I don't gain a lot from not taking the one point to grab EB, and you can get a lot of power in your helmet. So let's finish the core, right? We need PV to do PV things. We've added in Whispers of Doom because the easiest way to scale damage in this game is to stack two curses. Um, it's either stack two curses, invert mastery, or be an inquis. Those are your three options if you're in elemental build. You can't get, you can't not do one of those things. Technically speaking, there's also stuff like um, abhor interrogation, but we're still just leaning into things that scale with ignoring the like the res game. And also, abhor inter interrogation is a part of the the, in, the invert res game. So again, can't really escape inverting res, like dealing with reses in some way. So we're going to use Ellie weakness plus exposure from elementalist because remember exposure elementalist is basically another elemental curse but across the board and then we're going to combine that with us assassin's mark now let's talk about the tech let's talk about the tech as far as why i wanted to play tri herald because now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of the build i would say why tri herald in this day and age it's to enable heraldry in a fun or enable this exposure in a funny way and i kind of just like accidentally gave it up when i was talking there but the trick is there's a medium cluster jewel notable on damage while you have a herald's mediums that is called heraldry nearby enemies have exposures to element to the specific element while you have the associated herald effect so affected by ice you get cold exposure and affected by ash you get fire exposure this allows us to enable the passive the you know what is it called? Wake of Destruction? What, what is this called? Massive Mind of Discord. We can enable this at all times simply by running around with the Heralds active. And that's why we run Herald of Ice. Because we're playing in two different elements in this build. Ice and Fire. Or Cold and Fire. Ice and Fire. What the hell? Cold and Fire. Uh, and so since we're playing in Cold and Fire, we need to be able to expose in both in order for our Ascendancy to work and for us to actually deal damage to them. 
So we need this cluster. And now I'm going to show you a very idealistic cluster, but let me tell you that this cluster does not exist. This is turbo rare. This does not exist. A much more realistic cluster is either to use end ringer here for the 35% increased damage or our envoy is pretty strong here. Let's see the, like the two of them are both pretty good. There's also agent of destruction is fine here. Weaker than end ringer, but it's fine here. Uh, so, you know, any of these things work, just don't expect to get heraldry and purposeful harbinger. It like just save yourself the heartache and uh, put purposeful harbinger on a separate cluster because it's expen it, it's pretty hard to get. Now, if you're again, if you're in, if you're infinite money man, hey, look, infinite money that shit up. Then I don't have infinite money. I've already gone through like the crafting process to try to make this character happen at this time. I'm still in the process of finishing crafting this character actually because hard and. This cluster was one of the things that was like, oh lord, I have to actually alt spam this and like make it happen, and it does not hit the comp that combination. If I hit that combination, it'd be lit, but it won't happen. So you could just do purposeful harbinger and end ringer, purposeful harbinger, because remember we are using grace and hatred, our effect skills, both of those, especially hatred, very well. So we have our mediums. Now we kind of need clusters to put those in. My recommendation is elemental. Elemental clusters will give us Sadist, Prismatic, and Dorian's Lesson, or any suffix for that matter, actually, that isn't, uh, let's check the notes here, any suffix that is not widespread. So you can't get widespread if you want Prismatic at the front, which is kind of unfortunate, because, like, widespread is lit, or Prismatic is lit. But if you want widespread for some AoE, you can sacrifice Prismatic for it. I want Prismatic more personally. And so we're going to go for either Dorian thing or Doriani's lesson. You'll see here, put these two clusters in. I'm going to show you an alter a couple alternative options as well here. Just for different things that you can also enable as a result of this cluster. Getting a cluster made with like a composition su as such here, elemental, where you then go instead inspired op oppression, prismatic, and Doriani's will give you a cluster that allows you to have Doriani's at the front. If you see here, Doriani's lesson is at the front now, so you can get your leech without spending additional points. You can also just spend le extra points to get leech back here if you get it on like the ideal tri passive. Uh, both options are fine. Now, additionally, you can also use Fizz clusters. Fizz clusters are very good because the skill is base Fizz and therefore it'll follow us through conversion. At which point you will have to use Iron Breaker, Battle Hardened, and either Furious Assault or Force Multiplier. Well, this is the ideal bis. Furious Assault is fine. Do not use Master of the Fundamentals on here. The reduced elemental damage will zero out the uh, increased physical damage from, or increased physical damage and reduced elemental damage will cancel each other out because we are a bis converted build. And so we don't want that. This is another option, right? All of these, cl these clusters are all viable options. There's spell damage options, but we're not going to entertain the spell damage options because the spell damage options don't scale as ridiculously with the conversion interactions, especially on top of like base phase explosions from like an explode chest in the future or other things that you can do to really scale, get it nuts. It's just spell damage is very, very limited, but elemental is ideal because it'll scale our impulsa. It'll scale our heralds and it'll scale one last little thing that I have which is an Aurea Send. Or just that little extra bit of mapping power. Not necessary at all, but I have it, and therefore I wouldn't use it, goddammit. I'm in a private league, and I killed Sarah. We were serious, and it dropped on the first kill. So, like, we, we have to use it, right? We've got to put that thing to use. But now, once we've socketed in our clusters, and then we put our medium clusters in, you know, we have two additional slots. I would not actually use that many of these here, these clusters because crit clusters are fairly strong. AOE clusters are also fairly strong, but we're not charge stacking yet. Remember, when we charge stack, you want you'll want crit clusters with vast power on them in order to get your AOE to really like take off, and that's how you really like lean in. But until then, basis of pain, pressure points, get a quick getaway. Two of the three on any given cluster, plenty strong. And now if we look at the tree, let's see, are we at 100 yet? We probably are or are very close to 100. We are very close to 100. It's because we're not even killing. Are we killing Alira? We are not killing Alira. So we're it's like we are very, very close on points here. And the remainder of the points can be spent in who, who knows how many ways, right? 
jewel sockets, all sorts of stuff. Which I think I have everything, so I'm trying to remember what I didn't take. There's Ghost Dance, and I feel like I'm missing something else that was pretty important to me. Oh, this Cold Mastery. Right. I mentioned that I had Glacial Cage in here for a reason and didn't talk about the reason. We want this Mastery. Chills from your hits always reduce action speed by 10%. This is a defensive node, and it just feels good to have. This is just safety. It also opens up some other interesting possibilities for us scaling-wise, but we'll talk about that more later, like as other options. Now, this is the tree, and you might be thinking, why in the hell did you make the whole tree first? It's actually because the tree is pretty straightforward. This is very standard. Uh, this is a standard, like, charge-adjacent caster tree, honestly. This is a crit caster tree. If you look at it, it's very generic. I've done this a bajillion times. Uh, up the right side, grab melding, jewel socket. This AoE is specific to the skill. This glacial cage thing is recent to me. Uh, path over top here, grab Disciple of the Forbidden and the related damage notes here, as well as the Mana Mastery. Then floop over, cluster, curse, plus one curse, and crit nodes. Oh, man, so st so normal. Jewel, like this is a very standard arrangement. And pathing down on the far right side of a caster tree to grab Inveterate is pretty normal, which is why I also felt the need to just put a cluster here. Because you could just take out this cluster and path over top on the left side and end up over here instead. Like, this is an option, and end up, like, here in exchange. But you have to cut some other stuff to make that happen, and it's a little harder to do. But that's, like, another option that you can have. Note, when we go charge stacking with this build, if you decide to go charge stacking with this build, rather, you can simply just anoint the last charge here without any actual needs for changes. Now, let's talk other things that we need skill-wise. Because we fit in all our R's, we have our reservations together. We actually need to get, like some gear core things together what are we missing so the things that we're missing are well besides actual gear is our gems if we're missing any like important scaling options which the main things that i'd say we're missing are one to start you're going to want a way to automate your cursives uh you're going to unautomate your elemental weakness at some point though i'll, I'll show you what i mean so Arcadis brand, I like to automate both of these earlier on. It's very nice. Just plot the Blair down and blow up the target. Long term, you're going to actually want to drop the Arcadis brand. And it's because of this stupid jewel right here. Balance of Terror. You're going to want to get a Balance of Terror with Ellie Weakness on it for Fist, Fist's extra element, which is just a lot of damage. Uh, just straight up, it's a lot of damage. So eventually you're going to want to un-automate this, but automating it early on, completely fine. Uh, like I, I feel the need to be lazy here. I do it all the time, right? We're going to want movement skills, which a couple different options. I personally will be using a setup that lends itself to faster attacks and shield charge. But this has to do with ease of crafting items in my private league. It, when I recraft some stuff, I probably will redo it. And what I mean by this is that I'm running a scepter shield combo because I am uninterested in... We don't have any rune daggers is really what it is. We don't have any rune daggers. So a scepter like this um, is like... pretty. This is a reasonable scepter, by the way. So remember, guys, we're in Necropolis League, even though I'm in a private league or whatever. Necropolis League allow is an item printer of a fucking league. So we can create items like this pretty reasonably through some fractures and other stuff, right? Um, I, I would probably go, if I wanted to craft a fr something like this, I would look at trying to fracture one or both of the spell damage and spell percent spell crit nuts, preferably just fracturing spell damage, because then you can actually just essence spam until you hit, like, essence spam with the... Uh, not scorned, scorn is crit multi, um, not loathing. Cannot remember the essence for this. One second. Add modifier essence spells. Oh, it is scorn on weapons. My bad. Scorn is crit multi on other places. So you can spam scorns on this until you hit plus one fizz, then craft on crit multi, and this is done. All right. It's pretty close to what my actual scepter ended up looking like. And so boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Like this could be our scepter. Right. And you can see I'm mostly just going to like pull these over from somewhere because I did do this already. These are not like these takes you guys are not like raw me first time looking at the build things. I want to make sure that this is still like watchable for you guys. I don't want you sitting here for multiple hours like watching me go through it because my POV process is genuinely long. I take a lot of time to go through my builds and like revise details over time and refine things as I get there. 
And so as I do put these items in here, though, I will tell you about things that I revised and changed in order to force things to work. And so the next thing, speaking of this, is that we're going to need to put all of the some of the rares into this PLB. And it's because I need to show you guys the big problem with getting suppression on this fucking character is that was one of the big things that I told myself was like, I have to be able to suppress cap on this character. I have to because suppression is such a ridiculously strong defensive layer. And if I'm not able to run a chest that will give me fist taken ass, I have to be able to suppress. And I'm going to have to think of another way to get some fist taken ass to keep me alive. So actually, Mitchie fist taken ass, let me start there, right? Fist taken ass, uh, my current solution is that I'm just going to run a taste of hate and call it a day um, because I have a taste of hate and it'll work. And I'm going to probably think of another method to mitigate some more damage later as I start dying and start thinking it really a little bit harder. And we also do have the double fist ticket as helmet from Eldritch Implicit plus crafted uh, mod from Betrayal, right? And you'll see the suppression rule. It's worth noting, this suppression rule is not particularly realistic. It's me testing boundaries, right? Um, this is an 8, a 14% suppression rule, which means that's literally perfect. Like that's T1 perfected rule that's hard to come by. So that might not end up as good as I have it here, right? Other things might not end up as well as I have here. The suppression on the gloves might also not end up this good because, you know, I have to have that base. And I can tell you some of these are not looking too hot for your boy, right? The boots also are 14% and the shield is 22%. So really what I'm doing here is I'm just layering out to see how badly do I need all of the suppression. And the reality is that the starting character probably will not be suppress capped. Like when I start playing the character, I'm probably going to be suppressed as lucky until I think I can actually get the rest of the gear together to make this happen. But this is like the vision board for the starting vision. Like where do I want to like eventually aim for? Um, and stuff like fractures are very useful for that, except the lead mechanic does not help us get fractures for these, at least not in the way that you think. You do not use the bench to do it. You can't do like the gravecraft thing with uh, fractures to do it because suppress is a very hard mod to target. What you actually want to use is the all flame of the, of synthetic fury. I believe is the name of it. I can't type. This one. Yes. All flame member of, synth of synthetic fury. This makes monsters drop that drop fractured items. This is a very, very strong all flame. I do recommend having a good filter for this when you do run this. If you're running it like in a box as an app and whatnot, you will be I, like in the private league. We run it in like vault temples and whatnot, and we just fucking we are in there IDing fractures forever. But it's how we get our fractures. It's like by far the best way to generate fractured items if you need some, whether it be like or you know again if you're in trade, just look on trade, right? Get you some nice fracture bases. They really help the crafting process here. Uh, because the suppression is pretty important. The other thing that's really important about these gloves is the conversion. You'll notice this is 60% to fire. This with the fire is strange. And I just remembered this is actually supposed to be to a cold mastery first, a different cold mastery. The chill is a late game mastery. But earlier on, before I have a conversion watcher's eye, we use this fist to, fist to cold. And here's the math behind it. Fist to cold combined in with the existence of hatred, right? because we have Hatred and we have our Fist of Cold uh, Mastery, puts us at enough cold damage gained between the more and the gain that our fire damage falls within the cold damage range. Um, and that's very specific to filling in supports on BV. Let's talk supports real quick. Talking supports, increased crits pretty standard, increased crit damage is pretty standard. You have to run on leash, right? So that's four supports down. We need a couple more supports left on the character in order to like skill damage. You'll see Cult of Fire in here. Cult of Fire is a very strong support for this build. Um, in a different variation though. Cult of Fire I use in a variant that just goes pure cold conversion into fire conversion. And it's pretty strong as like a ridiculous top end option. But that's a top end option. At this stage, I like the idea the most of just having this be my gems. You'll see Awakening Out of Fire is something it really likes by the way. And this is an option that you do get. You just have to change how you get your conversion a little bit to make sure that it doesn't break Trinity support, which is what I plan on using as another part of really enabling the Tri Herald nature of this character or the multi, like Tri Herald multi element playstyle that we're going for here. I should set this to 10 blades just because it'll look better on the sidebar while we're working. And the last support is up in the air as far as what you want. Ellie Pen is really strong. Is Decently strong, but not necessary. 
Uh, Inspiration does not actually work. It like conch effect for a raw single target. Again, Awaken Added Fire is also pretty good. You'll have to rebalance Trinity. What we're going to be using, because I don't have Awaken Added Fire at the moment, is Intensify. And this is a two-part threat. Intensify, I'd actually say, is more important than Trinity. So we're going to put Trinity down here. And it's because Intensify gives us the ability to... to yeah, we have AoE on the gem for mapping. And then, if we repeatedly cast while standing on top of a boss, it'll ramp our damage pretty high. Now, while peel being, I don't actually count intensify very often. It looks like padding when I do, so I don't count it. Um, we don't we don't like counting that. Now, other things here. We have power charges. How are we getting power charges, you might ask? So during mapping, it comes from Disciple of the Forbidden. And during boss-related gameplay, we're going to get our power charges through Assassin's Mark's quality. Which, as far as I think, I completely messed up in here and I have to add a couple more things. Quality on BV is very important. It's a hit rate, which is really strong. You'll notice the qual the this moved up from 7.5 to 8.3. Make sure you have a ball BV, not a regular BV. Here, I forgot to do that when I was like sitting here to talk about it. Because ball BV is just a button you can press on top of your regular BV to do even more damage and make certain like mechanics a little bit safer for you to interact with. Then you know, quality on everything is good, yada, 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 all that stuff, right? But now that we've talked about quality on BV, we can talk about the last little weird reach piece that I have in the PO in the POV, Ashes of the Stars. I dropped this off of my first Uber Eater kill, and so as a result, I want to use it, right? My roll is 29%, we're going to assume 30 for a second, but like the roll breakpoint for this is like 27 or something like that for when it matters for damage. Like, it, there, there, there's a number in here somewhere where it started to matter, but like 29 is the roll that I have, and I put this on, and now you look at the hit rate. Look at the hit rate of our BV at 10 blades. 9.5! Like, up the qual- like, and the quality going up does not change that. If going down is what changes that, it starts to drop it. But it's one, like, 9.5 hit rate from 7.5 at 20, like, tw level 20 gem with no quality on it. So it's very important that this thing gets quality. It's all- it's about as important actually as hitting a 21, which makes this gem very annoying to think about. Trying to get a 21 20 fall BV, that's going to be fun. But it's what it is. We'll figure it out when we get there. But the quality from Ashes is then also going to make our sustain on power charges on hit much easier, as well as, you know, all the other good, good effects that come with our quality, such as like activation frequency on the brand. Our, our All of our heralds get good things, you know. Burning damage based on Herald of Ash for better clear. Herald of Ice Radius for better clear. Herald of Purity Minions, we don't care about those. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, Shield Charge gets faster with quality. Like, Frost Blink gets better with quality or Frost or Flame Dash, whatever you prefer. I'm going to use Frost Blink. Um, it gets better with quality as well. The quality from Ashes is very important to the build. And the other, like, core piece left really to talk about is the circle of guilt we we'll put it in the circle of guilt because this has like i said percent fizz damage and percent buff effect you can see the damage that this ring provides it is 50 15 percent damage i do not actually have one of these rolls yet for all of the synth bosses that i killed and i did a like i did a ton of boss farming for, for this i'm gonna have to do some more farming for this to get a better one something to use probably just a temporarily only buff effect one most likely like it's only minus six percent damage to lose the fist damage versus i'm pretty sure i lose more damage if i lose a buff effect yeah i lose more damage if i lose a buff effect so we're gonna use a singular buff effect one and call it a day for then or i might just use another rare ring to make the character easier to start could even consider curse on hit on said ring to make my life a little bit easier who knows um, and then my belt and ring from here are standard gear. My belt is extremely realistic because, you know, T1 League Mechanic Printer Go Burr. And I have a ring that falls under the same line, except I will need a fracture more than likely to hit this. I actually have hit something pretty close to this a couple times, but I need to, like, actually fracture a little bit to make this work. Um, that reminds me, now that I've finally done some grave crafting and whatnot to like start working on this character, there will probably be a tank coming on how I feel like grave crafting in whole now. Now that it's no longer just me thinking about what it does economically, but from more of a perspective of having used it at different stages in the game, I can give some more focused feedback about how I feel about that. So, you know, keep your eyes out for that if you're watching this. If you're watching this deep into the video, shout out to you, by the way. You really are interested in this build. And then 
other things here. I mean, fill in the flask as you need with the rest of the character, right? Like that's special, nothing special. Rare, the jewels here, again, remember balance of terror gets a lot of value the second that Arcanist brand is no longer in the picture. And then, which I've played this playstyle before, it's not terrible. Um, I you usually just use Ellie Weakness alone as your buff and periodically will drop Assassin's Mark on big targets. Uh, you could even Arcanist brand just the Assassin's Mark to make aiming it easier and then uh, just have Ellie Weak as a separate buff button, kind of like your blessing button. Other major scaling things in the build that are remaining to talk about is that you need to finish fixing your attributes, which was a two part problem for me, if I remember correctly. Like, it, this is not an easy problem to fix. One of the fixes, though, is to cat was catalysting the ashes for attributes. Um, because, yeah, that was the thing I had to do. By the way, the anoint here after setting up the config properly, remember, our enemies are shocked because we're, we're elementalists, and then we can chill them pretty easily we can freeze them pretty easily if we wanted uh we also can ignite them all that good stuff we you know frozen chilled ignited shocked enemies recently we have conversions etc if you wanted to start to actually see the damage of the character in full here this is what it starts to come look make sure you put full so you can actually see what the ball bv damage looks like as well at the bottom if you want to take a look at that um the damage is starting to come together right like the the, the picture's all coming together um you'll see that we still need a little we have our decks covered our dex is covered until we get to 129, uh, until we get a 21 on our dex gems. And the solution for that dex is going to be just, you know, get a dex, get dex on a jewel or something, something light. The other two, the other things to talk about are this lethal pride that I'm about to put in here. Bang. We need this. We, we need this for the build very badly. It fixes our strength. You'll see that we have 119 strength at the moment. I put this in, we're at 159. Our strength is now fixed. Huzzah! We fixed a we fixed a we fixed a large problem with our character actually by doing this. Now we fix our strength, and this also is a, this is a really well rolled one. This is like perfect one. The seed will be in the POV will be in the description, so you can you know see if you can snipe one of these up. But life, fizz taken as it's fizz. It's double damage. It's insane. Something I just thought about, as I remember for auxiliary jumps, by the way, there's a reason to take this charge mastery here, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, either for the damage per charge or the charge duration. I'm gonna probably take the charge duration if I find if I find the point for it. Might sack ghost stance for it because I shouldn't actually need it. If I just get like a one, maybe I take a one pointer ES leech or something. Uh, I'll think about some different ways to get around having getting getting a point freed. Might even just drop this crit multi for it, honestly. Crit multi doesn't affect the rares in my maps. Um, and the charge duration will actually affect a lot of the build because we have the sockets, if you'll notice, right? There's a six link, a four link, three link, technically, to go with this two, this two link, and another three link. We haven't really talked, there's like an entire four plus two remaining to talk about in here. And so, a part of the like open sockets that I just mentioned, Enduring Cry. And what's crazy is, is so like I'm explaining to you this to this to you right in a weird order, but I make this PLB in a weird order. Like I, I go I'm all over the place when I'm putting PLBs together. You guys like we are all over the place trying to put this together, and so we put ink AOE here. This works. Now we need we need we have extra space right. We have three three, so we're gonna keep these as three links. We're gonna put these. I usually mark where these go in slots to help me like keep track of my sockets right. Just making sure that I know how many sockets I have in what places. So I have one socket in my gloves currently and one socket in my, and two sockets in my boots currently, which means that we can use a cast on damage taken setup and still have room for inspiration. So check it out, right? Like this is probably what I would do. Inspiration here to give you ba base flexibility so you don't need as much ES. And then I would add in my elemental weakness here. Like I said, remember like balance the terror stuff. Then, I could take the Arcanist brand, put it back on, take the elemental weakness out of here. And then we're just running cast when damage taken. Make sure the cast when damage taken is set up to a way that it cannot support this Arcanist brand. And uh, Immortal Call. This combo is actually pretty strong together with the fact that uh, the, what do you call it? Oh, wait, this is gonna mess something up. Make sure these are unlinked actually. You need to have it be two separate two links. I forgot this happened. I've done, I've done this before. I've tested it in game. It does break if you don't do this correctly. So you need to do 
Immortal Call and Castle Damage Taken. Now, this is a personal taste thing. I sometimes do not like this version of the setup where you go uh, in Northern Call, like Castle Damage Taken, Immortal Call, make sure their levels are synced up. I don't like this version as much because I actually like the endurance charges being up all the time from Call to Arms. And in order to like get this higher uptime, I'd have to consider like not only 20 quality in here and like really leaning into that, but I'd have to even consider an enhance to get it really further down. And if I didn't want to go that route to make sure that I'm having it up constantly to sustain this cast and damage taken that I just put in, you could change this to what I'm using currently on my hex blaster, actually automation plus steel skin. And I think this is also plenty fine. I think both options are very strong. You pick the one that you feel like will fit your character best. I'm probably going to use this, but I know that both options are around. So, you know, I wanted to put both options on the table for you. Um, the other major scaling piece, now that I'm back, because this is important to think about when we're talking about like, oh, why do we need so much strength? What do we need the strength for? It's for those defense jewels or gems. Then, now that we have, our, have the, those things solved out, the other major things is that we still have technically a really cool damage scaling option available to us because of the league mechanic. So... This league added the Jewel Perandus Pact. If you're not familiar with the Perandus Pact, I'm going to take a moment to very quickly cover it here at the end. Because we're almost done with the PLB. Like, I'm not going to bore you with the details of, like, filling in, like, little tiny details. I'm just going to copy over a Jewel and, like, show you what it does. But the big thing is the Perandus Pact. This Jewel is added from the league mechanic. You need the four various Perandus corpses to create it. And then you can use corpses to refine the results. And you can pretty much almost guarantee that you get the effects that you want. So in this case, I want increased physical damage, obviously. And something neat, um, I talked about it in my Hex Blast video, if you saw that one recently, but something neat about this, uh, if I go to, let's go to Craft of Exile for this, actually. If I go to Craft of Exile, and I look at jewels, um, just any jewel base, close the groups for a second, because we don't actually need to see anything normal. We're going all the way down to the Vault Implicits. If you look at the Vault Implicits, for jewels, right? They're all available. And you'll notice that jewels, the, the implicits have tags as well. And there's a corpse that corrupts our jewels or corrupts items that you craft through the corpse mechanic. So stacking enough of those to try to almost guarantee a corruption implicit and then having it corrupt with CB sounds like it'd be really easy, except for the part where it'll complete compete with bleed duration. And it looks like I will be stuck. I won't be able to get it better than like a one in three because it's also fizz, overwhelmed fizz. Well, like a chance at a one, a one in three chance, basically, maybe like one in four. When I factor in all the other weightings after I'm done, I mean, a one in four at getting fucking CB jewel on like a best in slot damage jewel would be insane, right? Like, like those are, those are odds that we used to, that we would, that we used to cry for, you know what I mean? Like we, like if we got given those odds in real life, it'd be insane. Now, where's this jewel going? Cause it's 6% damage per passive. It's actually technically better. If we put it in the technically better to put it here in the lethal pride spot, but we need the strength in this lethal pride. And so we put it down here instead. We put the paralysis pack down here. It's plenty strong. It gives us lots of damage. Look at this. It cap this is 15 passive points in radius of this jewel. It's plenty good here. We like this spot. You could use it over here, but it's not as strong over here. So I don't use it here. You use it here in the other builds. This is a very nice spot for it, though. And that's like the bulk of like where that we start to get damage, and then you start to get really frisky when you start to, you know, optimize your jewel sockets. Like these are some unoptimized jewels I'm about to put in real quick, just to kind of like fill out the build a little bit, so you can make sure you see how this comes together. You can see we're at six point eight million damage. Like that's just total. That's not including again. Intensify is not enabled for damage purposes. We add it up. It's now eight point seven. But again, I take intensify out of my math. Some other things to cover very quickly, right? Is you know just implicits are pretty good. Implicits on boots are pretty like up to you in terms of what you want. Um, with an ancestral vision, that which is the reason we have the suppression here. The Ailment avoidance here, by the way. Ailment avoidance on the shield is to be paired with a ancestral vision and a boot implicit, and that's how you finish that. But you can also use a boot implicit here for gain while you don't have that stuff. So I'm gonna put the right ones in here for now, like the endgame version here for now, and just like you know, 
if you were if you were listening and you heard me heard me when I dropped the dropped the random nugget there, I mean you got random nugget. I like uh Scorch Ground by the way when playing BB, it just feels very good. Um you just you know, you run over things, you shield charge through things, you whirling blade through things. Remember I talked about using a scepter because I had to. I'd rather use a dagger with whirling blades, but I have to use a scepter first. Uh, just based off what I have available to me, but a rune dagger so I could use rolling blades to get through things would be nice. But also open the option of dropping the shield and just running two daggers for more damage. But I'd have to consider the uh, survivability impl implications of not having said shield. So that's another thing to you know consider. But you know you get some ailment avoidance here, which you actually do not need a lot to pull this off. I guess it'll be twenty percent here, thirty percent from the shield, and then. Replace one of our bu one of our bummy jewels with ancestral vision. This jewel is ridiculous. I really don't know why they added this to the game, but you know, hey, they did it. Then we just slap an ancestral vision on one of our jewel slots, and now when we look at our avoidances in P here, we are ailment immune, which is ideal. So that's that. That's like the core of this character. That's the idea that we're going for. Uh, how am I going to scale this character further? Shit, I don't know. Uh, might turn it into something cold to fire, might turn it into pure cold, might turn it into a charge stacker, might do who knows what, I don't know. Uh, but we're going to go crazy with this. And, uh, you know, if you've watched this far, you're crazy, but I love you so much for doing so. Thank you so much for watching this video. And like, I hope you've learned a lot. Put any questions you have for me about the process or the build or anything down in the comments. And don't worry, I'll make sure to update you guys when the, when the character is like actually in play. Don't worry. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Take care. See you guys in the next one. Peace.